Tell us about this guy. Okay, so this happens to be my, this is my baby. It's the only one that I keep under plastic. Uh, this is a memory Moog. Uh, it's actually a memory Moog Plus, uh, but somewhere along the line, my Plus got, got erased off of here. But it really is a memory Moog Plus. Uh, uh, you know this by, uh, it has a sequencer, and a plain memory Moog did not have a sequencer. Uh, the Memory Moog Plus also added MIDI. Um, this machine is from 82 to 80 when Moog went bankrupt in 84. Um, and was part of the reason that, uh, well, I don't know if it was part of the reason they went down or not. I've never gotten a straight answer on that. But this was the last, this was their one and only, like, great, honest to God poly synth. The poly Moog doesn't, doesn't really count because it was a divide down machine. But um, if we're calling a poly synth, one you know, oscillator filter VCA chain per voice. This is the only one that Moog ever made. And it is a beast. It is um, three oscillators plus an LFO. Um, following very broadly in the architecture of the Mini Moog, um, which actually all these other things did too. Um, you know, oscillators into a mixer, into a filter, into a VCA, and out the door. Um, Again, without auto tune, this machine would be impossible because it gets really hot under the hood with 18 oscillators, with, well, you know, six, 24 oscillators sitting there, you know, churning. Um, interesting, uh, this is uh, one of the most convoluted machines to work on ever. It is just a complete engineering nightmare, and it's, they really have no business working at all. They just don't. And in fact, this one, I was, you know, every time I turn it on, and I and I hit auto tune and it says six tune and I say a little you know a little thank you to the universe that it actually is all coming up because there's just there's so much to go wrong with them, um, and the guys that know how to work on them like intimately know how to work on them either have all thrown up their hands in complete disgust and I don't blame them, or they've died because they're getting old. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this thing. Uh, has got some modulation stuff that uh, that the uh, you know besides the the LFO you've got some polymod stuff that's a little bit different from the Prophet and isn't even on the radar of that Oberheim. Um, but the main thing you've got in this that none of those others have is they is Moog decided to build into each voice. Um, an honest to God transistor ladder filter. They didn't do it on Curtis chips or whatever, but they actually made a discrete um, filter for each voice and they tried in their own way, so the story goes, to uh, broadly copy the voicing of the mini within a polyphonic context because you can't really, if you put six mini mogs together, you just get this, this mess. But this thing, they try to do that and so it ends up being just this. Now you end up getting this really out of tune mess because I just <laughs> turned it on. Right. <laughs> uh, you also happen to get one of the worst auto tune routines ever devised by anyone ever. This thing takes forever to, to tune. The Prophet is tuning 20 oscillators and will do it in three seconds. This thing is tuning 18 oscillators and it, well, we're still waiting on it. There it goes. Six voices. Terrible timing. I mean, it's just this sloppy timing everywhere. There's there's a little Z80 in here, which is the same thing that's in the 10, but the way they wrote the code or whatever they did, the timing on these things is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> terrible but that's part of the charm I mean that's one reason I love it is it's got its you know um, what else you've got the fabulous just oh, that it's got that sweepy buttery growly thing that the uh, mini does <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
you know, fun stuff.